Over the past 30 years, Gaz Transport and Technigaz have gained the reputation of leading specialists in naval engineering for the transport of liquefied natural gas, LNG. Today, it's the only company in the world able to design membrane-type methane carrier tanks. Through constant efforts in research and development, GTT have continually improved these systems both in terms of performance and reliability. To further technological development, Gaz Transport and Technigaz conduct numerous laboratory tests. These tests, performed in different specialized centers, one of which is part of Gaz Transport and Technigaz, evaluate the characteristics of materials and the partial assembly used. Due to the transport temperature of LNG, minus 163 degrees centigrade, it's essential to test the material in cryogenic conditions to check their mechanical and thermic characteristics, as well as their behavior at very low temperatures. Other tests are conducted on reduced scale models to simulate the motion of liquid in ships' tanks, thus providing a closer evaluation of hydrodynamic forces on the walls. By taking these results into account, Gaz Transport and Technigaz can optimize the design and quality of membrane systems as well as their implementation. In the membrane tank concept, the double hull ship structure is used as a basis for a tight, heat insulated cryogenic lining. The membrane gives the tank its impermeability to gas and liquid, whereas the load-bearing insulation system transmits the LNG loads to the hull and limits the cargo boil-off rate. Gas Transport and Technigas have developed two membrane systems based on this concept which use different types of materials. The first of the two current systems developed by Gaz Transport and Technigaz is the NO96 system. On completion of the ship's double hull, the tanks are equipped and set up as full-scale all-weather workshops. To allow for access along the walls and ceiling, the first step is to erect scaffolding in each of the tanks. It has several levels, allowing vertical and horizontal circulation and there's wide storage and handling area on the floor of the third level, which is directly accessible through an opening in the ship's hull. Very precise topographical measurement of the inside surface of the tank, as well as of the defects in flatness, is carried out with laser equipment connected to portable computers. The coupler bases are positioned using a laser sensor. They're then welded by an automatic welding robot. The coupler bases represent the mechanical bonds of the NO96 system. They're fitted in a rectangular 1 meter by 1 meter 20 grid.
On the basis of the dimensional survey taken previously, the defects in hull flatness are compensated vertically at each base by fitting reference wedges from 4 to 15 millimeters thick, which have been calculated by computer. In this way, an ideal surface is obtained using these reference wedges, which smooth out any hull deformation and serve as a reference for the fitting of boxes. Along the tank transverse corners, 8mm thick anchoring flat bars are welded to the double hull. These bars transfer induced tension to the hull in each of the metal membranes. While all this is happening, the prefabrication of insulating boxes has begun. These plywood boxes are assembled to very precise specifications by a highly automated industrial woodwork manufacturer. Staples are used for the assembly. The boxes have inside partitions which give them great mechanical resistance. The boxes are then filled with perlite, an insulating mineral powder, and vibrated before being closed up, packed and sent to the tanks. These boxes represent the insulating part of the cryogenic system. Before assembly, resin ropes are applied on the back of the secondary insulating boxes. This operation is performed by an automatic coating machine which calibrates the ropes and puts them precisely into position. Rope thickness varies between 10 and 20 millimeters. The resin ropes are flattened when the boxes are put into place. They compensate for any level differences and balance out the bearing loads of the boxes. A craft paper foil is then applied to these ropes in order to stop them sticking to the steel of the double hull. The secondary boxes, each 300 mm thick with the resin rope coating, are set onto four adjacent wedges using manipulators. They're held in place with temporary devices until the precise alignment and flatness adjustments have been made. Following resin polymerization, the temporary fixing devices are removed.
boxes are permanently fixed onto the four corners by a plate nut and spring washers and coupler rod, which screw onto the previously welded base. The space between the boxes is filled with an insulating material made from foam or glass wool to limit heat convection. Stainless steel plates are fixed to the previous assembly, which will later receive the collar studs the primary boxes will be attached to. Held in this way, the upper side of the secondary boxes provides a smooth surface for the secondary membrane. The boxes, now perfectly aligned, have a T-groove on their surface every 500 mm, into which a continuous metal tongue is placed along the length and width of the tanks. The tongue is made of invar material, five tenths of a millimeter thick. It's automatically and continuously unwound, folded into an L-shape and inserted into the box grooves. This is the mechanical bond for the secondary membrane strakes. The tongues guide the positioning of the secondary membrane strakes. As for the tongues, invar strips, 7 tenths of a millimeter thick, are delivered in coils which are automatically and continuously unreeled and unwound along the length and width of the tanks. When the invar strips come off the reel, the edges are folded and lifted up at a right angle to make 500 mm wide strakes. These fit perfectly between the two adjacent tongues, equipped with temporary guides to make the unwinding easier. The strakes are held in place along the wall by means of temporary devices consisting of a hook anchored in the eyelets cut in the tongue. The strakes are then flanged into position by tack welding onto two adjacent raised edges on the intermediary tongue. This operation is carried out using a light automatic resistance welding robot.
The tightness welding is then carried out by fully automatic resistance seam welding. This is done on a continuous basis all along the length of the strake. The machine progresses along the strake at a speed of 1.5 meters per minute, held onto the rail which is formed by the emerging part of the tongue. Tank transverse corners are fitted with elements called invar tubes which are prefabricated off-site. These elements are made by folding and welding 1.5 mm thick invar plates. They're prefabricated into elements 3 meters long. Their prefabrication on automated assembly lines requires great accuracy. Their assembly on board is performed by the automatic welding of these invar tube wings onto anchorage bars. The tubes ensure the continuity of transmission of the primary and secondary membrane loads towards the hull and complete their tightness in the corner areas. Heat insulation of the transverse corners is completed by assembling specially shaped insulating boxes between the invar tube wings. The membrane parts, which are 1.5 mm thick and 500 mm long, called strake ends, are added and welded to bridge the invar tube wings and the secondary membrane. The strake ends are automatically welded onto the invar tubes using a TIG process without filler metal. The raised edges of the strake ends are welded manually and a round cut is made by a pneumatic shear of the tongue and raised edges of the membrane up to the resistance welding which ensures a perfectly tight assembly. The continuity of the secondary membrane along the tank's longitudinal dihedrons is ensured by a longitudinal composite beam on which both adjacent invar strakes of the secondary membrane are welded. They're welded automatically using a TIG process. The bases that we see behind the metal foil were placed temporarily under the invar membrane and screwed onto the stainless coupling plates. The base allows hole punching of the strake in order to screw the collar studs in. These stainless steel collar studs will later be used to anchor the primary insulation boxes. The base is welded onto the membrane by an automatic TIG process rotary machine.
Since the perfect tightness of the tanks depends on the quality of the welding, special attention must be paid during inspections. After completion of the secondary membrane, a tightness test is performed. For this, helium is injected under pressure into the insulating space behind the membrane. Then, a detector is run along the weld to locate any possible gas leaks. This test is accompanied by a 540 millibar initial vacuum pressure test to check the overall quality of the tightness. At the end of these controls, the secondary insulation and membrane are complete. These operations will need to be repeated for the primary insulation and membrane. The primary insulation comprises a layer of insulating boxes which are similar to those of the secondary insulation, yet different due to their thickness of 230 millimeters. Grooves have been placed in the box to allow the passage of the secondary membrane tongues and cleats are used to fix the boxes onto the collar studs using plate, washer and nut. These boxes are slightly different, for at the prefabrication stage they've been fitted with an invar tongue like that of the secondary tongue, except that it's curved and allows reinforced fastening of the primary membrane. Following the box assembly and alignment, it's easy to clip on the primary tongue, which curves in the opposite direction. The primary tongue is stretched out and flanged in this position by making a snug with this pneumatic machine. The primary membrane is next assembled in the same way as the secondary membrane. Automatic unwinding of the coiled invar sheet, folding the edges, automatic tack welding and strake seam welding. When the welding process is completed, a new helium tightness test of the primary membrane is performed, followed by a 540 millibar vacuum test and finally a resistance test under a pressure of 800 millibars. The tanks are then complete. Prefabricated to a gas transport and technigas design, the tripod mast is taken down in one piece into the tank by liquid dome. The mast supports the pumps, 
highly precise level measuring instruments, the temperature sensors and the loading and discharge lines, the upper part being connected to the piping network on the deck. The ship is now ready to deliver its first load. The double metallic membrane system, which is perfectly tight, guarantees a boil-off rate which is below 0.15% per day in cargo volume, in complete safety for the ship and its environment. The second membrane system developed by Gaz Transport and Technigaz is the Mark III system. Its assembly also begins with the completion of the construction of the double hull ship structure. Inside the tanks, sheltered from bad weather conditions, a scaffolding of the same type as the preceding system is set up for access along the wall and to the ceiling. A side access opening is also provided through the hull. Next, the inside surface of the tank and its flatness defects are precisely measured. Square anchoring bars are welded along the edge of each bulkhead. After tracing the axes, the threaded studs are welded to intersections on the flat part in a 3 meter by 1 meter grid. The studs are automatically welded with a welding gun. The intermediary studs are automatically positioned and welded with templates between two previously positioned studs. The leveling washers are next screwed onto the studs. Their elevation is calculated by computer with respect to the prior measurement of the hull in order to compensate for defects in flatness. In this way the leveling washers smooth out hull deformation and determine the ideal surface the prefabricated insulating panels will be fitted to. Insulating panels are industrially prefabricated in a dedicated facility. The flat panels are prefabricated by the successive piling and bonding of a 9mm thick plywood board, a secondary insulating layer 160mm thick made of glass fibre reinforced polyurethane foam, then bonded again onto the upper side, an aluminium glass cloth composite material sheet serving as a secondary barrier, 
the primary insulating layer previously prefabricated by bonding reinforced polyurethane foam and 12 mm plywood. The thickness of the primary insulation is 80 mm to give a final panel thickness of 250 mm after assembly. The panel boards are next machined to their final dimensions. This involves cutting of the primary block. Metallic inserts are then put into place for easier handling and erection on board. Stainless steel anchor strips on which membranes will be fastened are installed and fixing holes are drilled. The standard dimensions of the flat panels are 3 meters by 1 meter. The angle panels at 90 and 135 degrees are assembled by bonding in the same manner. Two sandwich panels made of reinforced foam, plywood and including a secondary barrier are held by bonding the rigid composite keys made of hardwood and heavy corners in stainless steel 8 mm thick onto which the primary membrane will be anchored along the tank edges. Inside the tank before erection the side of the panels is coated with resin patches or beads which when flattened during the setup of the panel will allow for a proper distribution of the loads on the double hull ensuring that the panels adhere to the structure of the ship. The flat panels and angle panels thus covered with resin on their backs are now fitted to the walls and along the tank edges with manipulators. held in place on the leveling washers and permanently positioned with nuts. The fixation holes as well as the space between the panels are filled with an insulating material either in foam or glass wool in order to limit heat convection. The secondary barrier is then completed by ensuring its continuity at the joint between each adjacent panel. For this, a secondary barrier scab is pre-cut and bonded with an even coat of epoxy resin and then positioned to create the joint between each panel. The bonding process is carried out under a slight pressure of 150 grams per square centimeter obtained using air sleeves. During this process the air sleeves are held in place by temporary bars and anchored to the upper plywood inserts of the panels. Following this operation the secondary barrier is complete over the entire tank surface. At the same time, a rigorous inspection of the bonded crossover point is performed with a vacuum box and a soap solution for a bubble test. Square 340mm by 76mm thick bridge pads prefabricated in the shop in the same insulating material and covered with plywood are bonded and fixed to the secondary barrier scab to complete the primary insulating layer between panels. During this time they're clamped in place for the time it takes for the bonding by the same temporary anchoring bars used beforehand.
On completion of this operation, the insulating system is complete and ready to receive the primary membrane. The Technigas membrane is prefabricated in a dedicated workshop. It's made of 304L stainless steel plate 1.2 mm thick, offering two perpendicular corrugations obtained by two successive folding operations. The sheets are delivered in their final dimensions and are ready to be installed and welded. Their maximum format is 3 m by 1 m. The corrugations operating as a natural bellows allow absorption of membrane thermal contractions and ship-induced hull bending, thus maintaining the primary membrane in an almost zero stress condition. The sheets can easily be handled by human operators or light manipulators. Each sheet overlaps the adjacent one and is held temporarily in position by several welding spots. The sheets are then welded onto the insulating block by discontinuous welding on the anchor strips which have been inserted into the upper plywood. The sheets are welded by continuous welding onto the adjacent sheets by an automatic welding robot. The welding uses a high reliability TIG process without filler metal. Prefabricated angle pieces are mounted along the edges of the tanks to ensure membrane corrugation continuity as well as tightness between each heavy corner. These parts are buffed and tacked before being contour welded by automatic and manual welding. Throughout the welding operation, the welds are inspected visually. This detects most possible defects. After completing the membrane, a total tightness test is made. For this test, each weld is coated with a yellow reactive paint, while at the same time a mixture of ammonia and nitrogen gas is injected behind the membrane. If there's a leak in the membrane, the paint will react in the presence of ammonia and turn violet. With this highly sensitive test, possible defects of only a few microns can be detected. After the test, a resistance test with a differential vacuum of one bar is performed. The tanks are then complete and tested. The Mark III system, which is perfectly tight, will safely transport its cargo, limiting the daily boil-off rate to 0.15% in volume.